Hi, this is Pete with Automatic Repair Company, and this morning we're going to test the output of a 6009 associated battery charger. The customer has complained that there has no output and it's not charging batteries. So we're going to set this up and we're going to diagnose it, and I'm going to show you how to uh, check the rectifier plate to see if that's the problem. We have this set up to a simple load bank, which is a 12 volt battery and a 90 amp load, and uh, that's going to uh, put the load on the charger to see if we can get any output out of it. All right, we turn the charger on, fans running, we have AC into the charger, nothing on the amp gauge at this time, and if we go through the rate switch, on no position do we get any output from this charger. If we hit the load bank, we still get nothing out of the charger. So we're going to take the side off, we're going to check the rectifier plate. Alright, so I've taken the side off this charger, this is a 6009, and as you can see, Here's your transformer and this is your rectifier plate. The rectifier is taking your AC, changing it to DC so that you can charge your battery. It is seeing most of the load from these units and if customers crank too long and overheat this, they will burn out. So the first test we do is we disconnect the output leads from the battery so that we don't get any false readings. I just dropped them onto the floor so that they don't touch the battery. Alright, we turn the charger on. Set the rate switch to 12, medium is fine, you can use, use 12 low, we're going to test all of them. And what we're going to do is take off loop meter, put it to AC volts, and we're going to test the AC output, which is right here, from the transformer. And I don't know if you can see that meter, but if you can, we're reading 26 volts. As I change the rate switch, that voltage should change. Now we have 31, and on high we have 34. If I go down to 6 low, we get 20 volts. So that, so that test tells us that the unit is working and that the transformer is putting out AC to the rectifier plate. So now the second test is to go to DC voltage and we test the output leg of the transformer, which is right here, and we touch the plate, which is the output of the rectifier. And we're in DC now. And if we go to DC, as you can see, we have no output DC. As I change the rate switch, you can see we still have no output on any leg. So that's telling me at this point that the AC is in and the DC has stopped coming out of the rectifier plate. It appears we have a bad rectifier plate. We'll shut the unit off, we'll take the rectifier plate out and inspect it. Alright, so we're set up to take the rectifier plate out. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the transformer leads, which are two 7 16 nuts. You can just pull those away. Be careful, they're aluminum, so you don't want to break them. There's a couple of washers on here, you can take those off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the output leg, and that's from the plate. That's also a 7 16 nut and bolt. Next step, we got two 5 16 studs that hold this plate onto the transformer. And it's that simple, we got the rectifier plate out. The very best way to test the rectifier plate is to simply open it up and inspect it. Uh, it could be partially burnt, it could have hot spots, or it could be completely cooked. So we take these off, two 7 16 nuts, we take the plate out, and there you go. All the fuse links are burnt. These diodes, which are 25 amp diodes, in this unit there's six of them, these have shorted out and have burnt all the plates. So that's scrap. Second side, we open that up, same condition. This is from uh, someone cranking the unit for far too long of a time, I'll show you that later as to why this happened. But he burnt all of this out, these are the fuse links, here's your diodes, those are all done. So we're going to replace it with a new unit. This item number is 610364. It appears on the 6000 series, 6012, 6014 units. I'm going to show you a larger one. This is a plate that's used in a 6002, 6001s, and uh, 6006 units. And this is uh, number 610100. This is a larger plate and it has more diodes in it, but it acts the same way. This is associated 6002B battery charger. It's a heavier duty unit. 
this will uh, charge up to 24 volts. It has the same condition. It's not putting any output out. I took the side off this, and in this unit, you can also take the front off. I got some screws in this. Take a couple of screws out. And the front comes off. And as you can see, that uses the 610 rectifier plate, 610100 rectifier plate. It operates the same way as the other one we showed you. It's just a larger unit, and uh, it has uh, more diodes in it to take a heavier load. This has the same problem. I did test this before, and there is no output from this DC also. All right, I've taken the uh, rectifier plate out of that 6002 charger. It came out pretty much the same way as all the others. Uh, I'm going to inspect this one. We'll see what's up with this. We probably have the same situation. There we go. As uh, all the all the fuse links are burnt. Second time. And that's the same condition. It's a uh, an overheated situation. This is what a good rectifier plate looks like inside. There's your fuse link plate. There's an insulator inside here. Nothing's cooked. All the diodes look good. And we can assemble that later and put it back in. I just wanted to see what they look like when they're not burnt. And both sides should be the same. They have to be visually inspected. Even if you think they're putting some output out, you could have one bank that's uh, shorted and the other bank that's working. So you have to open them up and look and make sure there's no hot spots. All right, so here's our new rectifier plate. We're going to put it right back in the unit. We put the insulating mounting studs back on. 5 sixteenths. Set those in for now. Two washers are important that go behind here so that these eyes don't open up. Put our transformer legs on. 7 sixteenths nuts. and our output leg from the plate, 7 sixteenths nut and bolt. All right, that's what it looks like. We're going to tighten everything up, and then we're going to test the output. All right, we made the assembly complete. We tightened everything up. Our output leg is secure. Transformer legs are secure. Make sure when you put these on that you don't twist any of these plates. You need to use a, a wrench on either side so that you don't push these diodes off center. Our insulators are in so nothing's touching. It's a good serial connection. And now we're going to test the output of this. All right, unit is on. First thing we're going to do is going to go back to our AC voltage. We had it before. Let's make sure we have it again. That's on the transformer legs to the rectifier plate. And still 34 volts. I'm turning the rate switch down, and as we turn it down, we have 31, 26, and 20. So we do have our AC volts just like we had before, nothing's changed, but now we want to test the DC. We're taking the meter, turning it to DC voltage, we're taking the output leg of the transformer, and we're going to the plate. Let me get these wires out of the way for you. And now when we go to the plate, I'll turn these around so we have it in a positive mode. Now when we go to the plate, now we have 11 volts out. As I'm shifting the, the rate switch, it's going up in voltage. There's 14. There's 16.7. And we got 18 volts out. So right now we have DC voltage out. While we're here, I'm going to connect this to my battery. We're still holding voltage, 16 volts, 14 volts, 12 volts. So we have good DC output. All right, we're hooked up back to the load bank. This is the front of the unit now, so that you can see the amp gauge. We're going to turn it on. 
RMKH, I hope you can.